Are wrestling fans? Don't you dare be sour. Clap for your world famous four time podcasters and feel the power. <coughs> Welcome to the Frustrated Wrestling <laughs> Fan. <laughs> too much for you, man. Welcome to the Frustrated Wrestling Fan. I'm Zach Hughes, your host. Uh, they call me the black dude with bad news. And with me is my co-host. They call him the watchman, the turn the lights off man. It's Tony Hoffman. The, the black dude with bad news? Yeah. Who calls you that, Zach? <laughs> I call myself that. Oh, okay. Just run. Well, just... Zach Hughes, black dude, bad news. Just yeah, the... it'll keep saying that and it'll, it'll eventually catch on. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Cool. So, uh, it's another week of wrestling, another week of entertainment. Wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. Yeah. Something that it also involved uh, some great physicality and some controversy outside of the world of wrestling um, was a commercial. And I want to talk about this commercial before we get into the podcast. <laughs> All right. It was a, a Texas mattress uh store called miracle mattress yes and uh they decided miracle they want, mattress. yeah they decided they want to advertise a sale it's a 9-11 sale okay. and <laughs> today is 9-11 by the yeah way, the, so recording this so the commercial features uh i guess the person who usually um does the commercials for this company and she's uh two guys are standing behind her they look to be muslim I do not want to profile, but it looked like two Muslim guys standing behind her. So she's going into her spiel about what the sale is. It's like, you want a, you want a queen size bed? You can get it for a twin price. You <gasps> want a full size bed? You get it for a twin price. It's our twin tower sale. So the two guys are standing behind. Twin uh, tower sale. Yeah, they're standing behind her and there's a stack of twin size uh, mattresses. And she like reaches back and like pushes them, and they fall into the towers of mattresses and knock them over. So <laughs> you can find this on YouTube. Um, I, they, what Miracle okay. Mattress took it off of their channel, but it's still up there. <laughs> yeah, oh, you put it on the internet, it lose forever. Yeah. What, what city? What region of the country? Is do you they're remember? in Texas? Of course. So. Um, I, I tweeted to Miracle Mattress. Apparently, they couldn't g get the name Miracle Mattress on Twitter. That belongs to somebody else. But they they are Mattress Miracle on Twitter. So make sure you check them out and and sure. say how uh, what a great piece of marketing that was. How clever it was and spot on. Um, so I and not at all. Yeah. So I tweeted to at Mattress Miracle, and I said like, with all this controversy and everything, what I want to know is. Is the sale still going? Exactly. On? Yeah, <laughs> that's a great sale. Mattress, twin so, mattresses. I have yet to uh, get a response. Uh, I think they've they've issued an apology on <laughs> online, uh, but yeah, I just thought that was an interesting uh, piece of news from the week. If you're not offending someone, you're not making comedy. People. Yeah. Um, to quote Eric Bischoff, "Controversy <laughs> creates cash." So yeah, we all know um, there's totally Miracle Mattress miracle. now, or Mattress Miracle, whatever the fuck it's called. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I would have been talking about them otherwise. I, I guess they were successful at what they were trying to do. All right. In other news. Um, oh, I want to talk about everything but wrestling. But in other news, uh, there was the whole Apple new iPhone event this week. So, as an iPhone user, what do you think about uh, iPhone 7? The resident iPhone user? Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm my contract expired back in July. I know this is you know very fascinating for people here. Yeah. Dear. Um, Not so iPhone I'm in the, lease out there. <laughs> I'm, I'm in the market uh, to upgrade from my iPhone 5C that I've had for, for two years. So, I don't know. I mean, I hate the fact that they got rid of the um, the little headphone jack. Yeah, you can't you can't buy like a regular pay, pair of headphones and stick it in there. Now you gotta. You can you use know. the adapter. 
yeah, if exactly. you don't Which, want to charge your phone that's at the what same people time. are gonna end up doing and that's you know more revenue for for apple you gotta buy more extra you know crap yeah so uh I, I guess like the big selling point is this dual camera thingy that everyone's yeah, all excited that, about that looks like it'll be better but I, yeah i mean i haven't used an iphone in a while but i didn't think there were too many problems with the cameras to begin with but you know they have to make some kind of incremental changes yeah. just to say they're Gotta, there's a reason for it but i, I think it's only on the on the 7 plus it's yeah not on there's the iPhones. double camera seven. on the 7 plus and i yeah. think the 7 just expensive. has slightly better normal camera so whatever i mean apple they they can screw over people as much as they want because everybody is going to still get it anyway so i'm probably going to end up just upgrading to a, to the 6 plus okay yeah why not <laughs> yeah, because the price is going to go down, so why exactly? Why Cause I'm a, ride the newest wave when that's going to be wiped out six yeah. months later anyway? Yeah, and cheap too. Yeah, <laughs> um, and the one thing with this weird with the getting rid of the headphone jack. Originally, they said it was to make the phone thinner, but it didn't make it any thinner because that didn't make sense. To to me to begin with because it's like okay you still have the charging port and that's about the same width of the headphone jack so you can't make it thinner in that sense and unless like you're going to go to wireless charging and they haven't yet nope. it just gives them something else to tease out for their next release but whatever I've seen like a picture of like someone wearing like those ear those earbuds yeah. without the wires and it, it looks so stupid. They just yeah, and I just feel like you're gonna lose those immediately. And it's funny that like those things cost what was it, like a hundred and sixty dollars, <laughs> and they're they're going to be easily lost. And I guess maybe they'll have some kind of recovery feature that's the thing they really need to publicize like okay if these are still synced up to your phone they'll like beep if you are looking for them because people are going to lose those on a massive scale then i just don't get it i like bluetooth i like stuff like that but just two little things like that is just i i would never spend that much on something the cult like of apple yeah absolutely <laughs> That's that's all it is. Um, anyway, this is a wrestling podcast after all. Oh, it is. And it is. <laughs> in eleven oh, minutes I in, I think people need to be reminded <laughs> of that. So, um, yeah, let's talk about some wrestling news. Uh, there's a few things that came out from this week. Um, oh, tits and bits. Yeah. Titty bits. Yeah. Nibbly tidbits. Um, there are seven new Chinese recruits to the WWE Performance Center. I saw that. Um, so that's cool that they're reaching out to China. It's the they, they they got their first uh, Chinese wrestler a little while ago, and I think that was Ho Ho Lin, who was in the Cruiserweight Classic. So now they have uh, seven new guys in total. So that's interesting. I want to see how that goes and see if that expands the market uh, uh otherwise there are some other little updates page has hired legal representation and it's not looking good for the prospects of her coming back to the company nah. so that's unfortunate but that seems to be the way it's going with her she's uh, turning the page it looks like turn the page wash your hands uh yeah so um tell me yeah, about this and, um, eva marie story <laughs> well uh eva marie uh currently uh suspended, suspended for yeah. violating the company's wellness policy uh she has apparently been cast in a movie uh starring academy award winners nicholas cage and faye donaway all right <laughs> Yeah, the movie is called Inconceivable. Inconceivable. <laughs> All right. Uh, and apparently, the, the the synopsis for the film. Um, I'm gonna read it now. When Katie moves to town with her young daughter, starting a new life after enduring abuse in her past, she quickly befriends another mother, Angela, and her husband Brian, played by Cage. 
Okay. Angela notices odd behavior from Katie and begins to question whether Katie's intentions are as innocent as she makes them out to be, or if something dark is lurking beneath the surface. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, I don't so know if this is going to be directed DVD or a It's Nicolas film. Cage, and it's <laughs> like... 2016 2017 Nicolas Cage so I'm assuming that is probably going to be straight to DVD although you never know because uh, he uh, was the star of the remake or reboot to Christian movie series Left Behind yeah. and that actually went to theaters and I saw that movie <laughs> why so, did you see that movie I don't know I guess I'm a masochist um, there was I don't know. Those movies are just weird to me. I thought it was going to be a a, a better produced version of that Kirk Cameron idea. The terrible yeah. Kirk Cameron movie. Because it's a movie about the rapture, and it, like, that's an interesting idea to me. I'm not going to talk about my religious affiliation or lack thereof, <clears throat> lack thereof, <laughs> but. I just think the idea of the rapture is very interesting. Like I, I watched the show, the leftovers on HBO, which is an incredible show. Like it's from the writers of lost and it has a lot of those elements in it and a lot of mystery and they don't really take a stance, but they look at it from all sides. And like, how would this actually affect people in the real life? So it was like, okay, left behind seems like it could be, approach that and it could be some cool special effects but then it was like nope this is just like the straight to dvd ones i've seen in my mom's house <laughs> they, made, they made like i don't know there's probably like six of those movies from the original like kirk cameron left behind series so was, the left behind series yeah because oh. like i knew i had made a mistake during the previews because you know you're you've crossed into like strange territory when it's like i don't see any previews for like movies i've heard of like featuring relevant actors it's like this whole like crappy religious <laughs> yeah, budget like, market i was like oh these movies are circuit. all like made for the same audience they're all made by the same companies they all have like yeah. t like uh abc family quality production <laughs> so like oh this this is just like those other ones but anyway so yeah even so, maria is in the movie uh she's you know apparently uh doing more you know since she's been suspended <laughs> yeah very productive yeah so we'll see uh, we'll see if there's a, a a christian friendly lesson in this movie and and we'll all rejoice all right um, probably the biggest news of this week was just uh, from a development that happened last night. We finally got the fight we've been waiting for. CM Punk. Uh, Chicago had made his, Punk? Yeah, he, he had his UFC debut, UFC 203. And uh, he fought Mickey Gall. Um, pretty Mickey Gall, <laughs> I guess you could call him, <laughs> based on his theme song he came out to. Uh he didn't know he should have came out to oh mickey you're so fun he you're did so fun. Blow my mind. yeah that was hey, mickey. that was his walkout song uh apparently it was so popular <laughs> that choice was so popular on the internet that uh they used it despite dana white having vetoed it previously <laughs> like he said we're not playing that song and then people demanded it and Fuck they, dana white. they decided to play it after all so um yeah everybody's been waiting to see how CM Punk would do in his uh, first foray into real fighting because he comes from that fake stuff. Uh, so they wanted to know if he was a real tough guy. And what what are the results? Uh, he lost. Yeah. He lost <laughs> in the first round uh, Pretty quickly. by submission. Uh, I feel like he put up a decent fight, but his... His ground game just isn't really there. Uh, he wasn't able to uh, recover after he was taken down. So that was pretty much it. I watched it last night. And, yeah, I was disappointed, but yeah. it he wasn't did, unexpected. He, uh, he had a nice little cauliflower ear. Oh, yeah, it was it was swelling up uh, by the time he was interviewed. 
yeah so that's how that goes so he's got a o and one record but now maybe he can learn from this come back uh bigger stronger faster yeah he um you know he says you know when um that idiot Joe Rogan was interviewing him that, you know, he's not going to give up. He's going to come back. Yeah. You know, it's a, hopefully, the you know, it's, a, it's an inspiration for anybody who was ever told no or that they couldn't do yeah. anything by, by coaches or by parents or whoever. And, uh, you know, dropped a nice little F-bomb there. Thank the people of Cleveland. And, uh, yeah, it's a, it, it's a nice speech. You should uh, listen to it. And when you get the chance, anyone? Yeah. So... What else did we have? Was there any other major news from this week? I guess we can talk about the Sheamus and Cesaro match. Um, like, so that counts, right? The, the, yeah. That, that, so pretty okay. much every London. match they're having, I guess even house shows are counting for it because they got video of it. So Sheamus and Cesaro were at, uh, they ended up at Sheamus 3, Cesaro 0 going into this match in London and surprise cesaro won so now if they're going the way i think they're going they're just going to do a uh a, it won't be a sweep at this point but he'll come back and win you, the following you think it'll three be matches. three th- okay yeah. Oh, yeah that's so predictable yeah because it's like he can't lose now because it's like they're all sudden death for cesaro because he only has one match left that he can lose so so that's that's how it's gonna go yeah yeah just as boring as it was to watch Sheamus win three in a row it's going to get boring to watch Cesaro win another three boy 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 yeah so that's that's the deal with that so let's get into raw all right you want to get into raw (laughs) Yeah, let's get into Raw. Raw is war, indeed. Um, so, speaking of Raw is war, uh, this show started out with somebody wearing a shirt that was pretty much a replica or spoof of the original Raw is War logo. Uh, that was the new WWE Universal Champion, Kevin Owens. So, he was wearing... Uh, this new shirt that says the Kevin Owens show in the raw is war style. He was brought out, um, basically to, uh, coronate himself as champion. He was, uh, brought out, I think by Stephanie, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think Mick and Stephanie introduced him and brought him out, something like that. Um, but Kevin Owens did some, I like what he did here because this is the mark of a good heel wrestler. Um, because when he won the championship last week, they said uh, they were chanting, you deserve it at the end of the show. And they started out this week by doing the same thing. So this could be something that would make the person look like a baby face and yeah. would give you a reaction that you don't they really do want. They do it for Bailey. They've done it for, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a reaction that, as a heel, you shouldn't want this. So Kevin Owens did some great work by saying, like, oh, you you go and chant, you deserve it to me, but you're basically making it all about yourself. I know I deserve it. You're stating the <laughs> obvious, and I don't need your approval. So he, he did a lot of, uh, he did some good work turning them around. Like, they went from chanting, you deserve it, to a couple minutes later, everybody booing you. So that is that's exactly what you want as a yeah. heel. So that just shows like how good he is on the mic. They got to keep the story going. They can't let him, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, I should we should also mention that before, like, like the, when the show started, uh, Stephanie and uh, Mick were uh, backstage, and uh, you know Stephanie was insisting that she didn't uh, have any, have anything to do with, um, with Triple H. Triple H interfering. <laughs> Yeah, coming out and uh, pretty much uh, giving you know, the title to <laughs> Kevin Owens. Giving it to Kevin Owens, and you know, uh, she may be telling the truth. She may not be. 
guess we'll have to. I guess we'll find, find out. out. It seemed like at the end of the segment, they kind of cut it off just as she was like starting About to, to smile. have a little smirk. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think that's going to be the reveal there. Um, so after Kevin Owens does his uh, like tirade against the audience, pretty much, uh, Seth Rollins comes out furious, um, says how Kevin Owens is just a puppet. And then he starts getting in Stephanie's face. The authority. Uh, yeah. Saying, how did, why would you do this to me? I put this company on my back. I was your golden boy. Um, so Steph gets mad. She says, you're suspended. And then. You're suspended. It doesn't have the ring to it of you're fired. But I guess that was her version of it. Um, but Mick kind of vetoes this on the spot and says, no, you're not. You made me the GM of the... <laughs> yeah, I'm supposed to set the matches and that's what I'm going to do. So, uh, he... And the best way to solve this is a rematch or yeah. whatever he said. <laughs> yeah, so he sets the championship match for Clash of Champions and it's going to be uh, Owens versus Rollins for the Universal Championship. So that was the end of the Yay. first segment. Is that a commentary on how you feel about them? <laughs> <laughs> how predictable it ended up. I, yeah, the setup was predictable because, I mean, that was what we read last week. That was the the rumored match anyway. It's pretty obvious. Um, uh, so that was the end of that first segment. Um, one thing I saw during the commercials after this first segment was interesting. So there's a, a WWE film. Uh, maybe not to the level of uh, Nicolas Cage's work, but there's a new WWE <laughs> film that's coming out straight to DVD called The Interrogation, and it's starring Edge and Lana, and she's cre- <laughs> she's credited as CJ Lana Perry. So Lana was in quotes, so I'm guessing she's <laughs> we have gonna, to know who she is. Yeah, I, I'm guessing she's gonna be in the movie without her accent because I mean Lana in real life does <laughs> oh, not wait, have wait, a wait, Russian wait. accent. Are you telling me that she's American? Yeah, she, I think she's from Florida actually. <laughs> well, that's I mean, kind of like America. She may be yeah. of Russian descent, but she does not talk like that in real life. So it'd be interesting. So check out the interrogation if you want to hear more of what Lana really sounds like. If you're that fascinated. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one thing they did uh, when they came back from break, they were backstage with uh, Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens. And Foley. Yeah. The thing that I thought was hilarious is that Jericho was saying, Kevin Owens is the longest reigning universal champion in history, which is <laughs> like, it, yes, it's technically true. It was just hilarious because, it's like, yeah, the first Universal Champion, Finn Balor, only had it for like twenty three hours or something. Yeah, like exactly. That. So yeah, he's he's currently the longest reigning Universal Champion in history, and that reign just continues to be that record continues to get broken every second, every <laughs> yeah. every ticking second. Yeah. So so there yeah. he uh, Kevin Owens gets in Foley's face about what happened, and Foley puts him in the match against. Sami Zayn for the for uh, at the end of the night and Jericho is uh, set up against uh, Seth Rollins. Yeah. For the show. Yeah. So after that, we see I think we see uh, Charlotte and Dana Brooke. Um, she's telling her that she's she's disappointed her recently and she's gonna go out and show her how to beat up Bailey and wants Gives her, her a clipboard. Yeah. Take say, notes. Take notes. <laughs> And I tweeted about this during this segment. I was like, anytime you give Dana Brooke props, that is money. <laughs> because she had like the nurses scrubs the week before that. And I thought that was like her best uh, outing on screen. Like just giving her some kind of gimmick. It always like makes her more interesting to me. So I figured the clipboard would help with that also. She needs some, uh, she needs a whip. Yeah. Uh, she needs a. Uh, she totally chain. looks like she she would carry a whip around. Okay. She needs like one of those uh, those like mask. No, she needs like uh, like the with the hats that the dominatrix. Yeah, one of those leather little... daddy hats. Exactly, <laughs> like a police or whatever it is. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, so Charlotte's out there with Bailey. I think that was right after this, right? Yes. Yeah, so Charlotte's uh, basically working Bailey's leg this entire match because she's hurt apparently. Yeah. So, <laughs> I they didn't show what Dana was writing on that clipboard, but what I would just assume that the notes say is just work the leg. <laughs> and, and then that's work it. leg. Yeah. So I figured that that would be it. But like Charlotte wanted to go out there and prove this point and show Dana how to beat Bailey, but she didn't. Uh, so Bailey ended up winning. And she does the the Bailey to Belly. Yeah. For, for the pin. Is it Bailey to Belly or Belly to Bailey? I think it's Bailey to Belly. Okay, Bailey to <laughs> Belly. All right. So she she pins her with that. And it's funny how like certain wrestlers will just pick a move that we've seen somebody do in the past. It's like a the transition move. <laughs> yeah, but even like like uh, the most popular person I could think who used it before her, a lot of people use belly to belly suplexes, but I could think of like Ken Shamrock, but that wasn't like a major move for him. It was kind of like something he would do in the middle of the match, but like she yeah, made it, it was her just own. part of the arsenal. Yeah, she, she made it her own. And I think now it looks like a credible finisher because like it fits in with her gimmick also because she's like hugging you as she's slamming. So I think, uh, because she likes to hug. Her. Yeah, she's a hugger. This dirty, rotten huggers. <laughs> They're germs. Yeah. They're love. Yeah. Um, Howie Mandel would totally not be a fan of Bailey. She yeah. would She would have to fist bump him. Um, so we see an announcement that Sasha has some bad news. But she yeah. wrote on her Twitter page that yeah. she has bad news at oh, doctors. Yeah. All I could think of was bad news bear. I thought she was going to reveal that she's dating Wade Barrett. Like, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. But we'll see what that is later in the show. What could it be? Yeah. Um, so then there was a Connor's Cure promo because, you know, everybody wants to have a good cry in the middle of Monday Night Raw. Um <laughs> Then afterwards, uh, Charlotte slaps Dana uh, because at the end of the match, because it's fun. She yeah, it, but at the end of the match, she tried to interfere, and that's kind of why Charlotte lost. So she gets slapped for her troubles. Um, next was uh, something I wasn't expecting was Bo th- Dallas. Yeah, the return of Bo Dallas. Who wasn't he like arrested uh, a little while back? I, I I think so. Yeah, I believe he was arrested, and it, but I I thought they would have been done with him after that. But we brought him back, and it sounds like they're going to decide to push him based on that because yeah, he, he beat um yeah Kyle Roberts. Yeah, he got uh one of the uh, spotlight jobber matches of the night because you know that's like a weekly thing on Monday Night Raw, like a an unannounced uh, wrestler already in the ring was waiting for Bo Dallas who comes out with uh, yet another Donald Trump gimmick uh, because you know you got Darren Young making Darren great again and you've got uh, Bo Dallas with his his rally uh, signs as he comes out it's topical yeah so he does like a poem or I guess you call it a boem uh, when he as soon as he comes out and then he does a quick match knee 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 to the head and then uh he does they call it the rolling the dice but that's basically uh cody rose uh, crossroads crossroads finisher (laughs) um so i guess that was a shot at cody rhodes uh but whatever that happened yeah um so the aforementioned uh, rollins jericho match yeah that was next oh uh, before that i i took a note of there was a smackdown commercial uh which is funny a lot of people in the past a uh, couple weeks have thought like why are they advertising smackdown's pay-per-view on their stage it was like well they're all the same know, company you know they're they're supposed to be competing but of course they're the same company and they <laughs> they're not going to lose money just for this fake competition so i didn't really have a problem with that 
Um, but there was a SmackDown commercial in between uh, these segments, and like right when they came back to the show, because I didn't know the announcers knew like the commercials they were playing, but I guess that's technically in the same feed as the show, because like right when they came back from the SmackDown commercial, uh, Michael Cole was like, "Yeah, but there's only one flagship show, and that's Monday Night Raw." <laughs> so <laughs> I like that little touch. Just like okay, we gotta keep that going. Yeah, we we're still putting that idea of the rivalry out there so that was cool um the rollins jericho match i didn't think there was like anything spotlight worthy of this no not much at stake yeah except for the ending though i like that uh and i'm assuming he's gonna have to stop doing this soon but uh rollins won with the pedigree but i like how he put it on he kind of got him like coming off the ropes and just like hooked him in it really quick and hit the pedigree um, which is like something Triple H never does. It's always like this drawn out setup. Is like yeah, exactly. I was gonna say he's like, coming off the ropes, there, kick like... him in the stomach, hook, <laughs> hook, look around, turn towards the hard camera, and then hit the pedigree. So I like like him making it his own because it's a thing you could fall into. Like if you're doing somebody else's move that they made famous, like you have to make it improve it. <laughs> yeah. You have to improve it and make it your own twist on it. Because that was the thing I had. I used to have a problem with uh, Dean Ambrose's finisher because it's just a double underhook DDT. And people have used that for a long time. Mick Foley used to use it, but his looked like super ugly. He used to always go sideways when he dropped Everything it. about Mick yeah. is super <laughs> Yeah, but I like how Dean Ambrose switched his up. He's able to like dodge a clothesline and turn that into it, hooking it and hitting it really fast. So that's kind of how... Seth Rollins has adapted this where he can just get it like out of nowhere, almost like an RKO. So I like that touch on it, especially because he's probably going to have to change it soon. I'm I'm guessing maybe he'll use this until he finally has uh, a match with Triple H and eventually beat him with the pedigree. But he should change the move like right after that or maybe start debuting another move like a little before that because i'd like to see him do something else i missed the curb stomp uh i feel like that was like the best move but obviously has a bad connotation with the name and they don't want kids imitating that but like it's an awesome move but whatever fuck the kids the children (laughs) damn right uh i don't think that's the mcmahon stance on that (laughs) Especially with Connor's cure, uh, yeah. Like, Vince, the, the McMahon fa- family cares about family values. Yeah, I think that was was one of the things they said was the final nail in the coffin of the curb stomp, because they said Vince just looked at it one day. It was like, I can picture Shane doing that to Stephanie back when they were kids. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I, I could totally picture that, and I, I would have loved to seen <laughs> home videos of like Shane stomping on his sister's head. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so after that was Cesaro Sheamus. We talked about this a little bit earlier, but uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> Cesaro's down by three. Spoiler alert: he wins on Wednesday. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so get ready for his comeback. Uh, one thing I would say about this match is that it did tell a better story uh, than the previous matches because they like had no anticipation before, but. I like the idea like his like entire body is almost taped up now his shoulders been taped up he had the tape all over his back and uh Sheamus did some some cool stuff working on the back the one move I thought was cool was he picked him up for like his move the Celtic cross where you you think it's going to be like the running powerbomb move but he like throws him in back first onto his knee so that was that looked pretty brutal so <laughs> that was probably the highlight of that match for me. Um, after that was Enzo and Cass versus Primo and Epico, who I, I don't understand why they're being used. <laughs> it's like they... They're the shining stars. They're the shining stars of the Caribbean, and they, I could not care less. But um, they wear Hawaiian shirts and shit. Yeah, so they I think they came out first and they were doing their promo talking about come to Puerto Rico, shining star of the Caribbean. And you're thinking like, okay, this is lame, you know, fuck these guys, you know, yeah, so, Cass is gonna get an easy win. 
Uh, yeah, but but before they get into the match, Enzo and Cats come out. They they do their little intro. Everybody's into it. And you and can't teach that. That. Yeah, but they they said something like, "We're right here in the middle of America in Kansas City." It's like Puerto Rico is America also. <laughs> so I don't. Yeah. I didn't get what he was talking about. There was like, okay, whatever. Because uh, American territory. Cause, yeah, because I was worried. I was like, these these idiots in Kansas City are gonna start <laughs> chanting USA. Please don't do it. And I think they stopped just before that happened. Jesus. Yeah. So, um, oh, and Enzo does. Uh, it, that's the thing. There, a lot of people compare New Day and Enzo and Cass in the sense that like some of their extra attempts at comedy are like hit or miss, and this like spotty. B- yeah, birthing a, a baby in the middle of the ring. Uh, the the one thing that was slightly funny was Cass with the uh, coaching Enzo's birth. Like, how you doing? <laughs> How you doing? Like that got a little reaction from the crowd, but otherwise it was just like cringe worthy. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that they got into their match, and um, oh, um, I think I want to go to my uh, commentary line of the week. It finally comes from Raw. Uh, usually is a SmackDown awarded prize, but uh, my line of the week comes from Byron Saxton, a very unlikely winner. <laughs> but um because he doesn't really have many highlights ever no. but um they i can't remember who mentioned i think Corey graves was the one that said it he was like why don't you go to puerto rico byron and he was like i don't have any vacation days and you could just hear he could just hear uh michael cole cracking up off mike he was like yeah whatever and they got back into commentary but like i like just hearing that like genuine laugh from uh michael cole after that because that was just a funny thing that helped me be distracted from this match that didn't matter. Wow. Um, so the shining stars steal a win and that is whatever. Um, next we have another jobber match, our, our weekly tradition, Nia Jax versus friend of Alicia Fox. That's apparently <laughs> that's he wished the, her luck on uh, her Twitter. Yeah. Uh, and Esposito. And that's funny. Um, you know, it's not going to go well when friend of Alicia Fox is your top credit. Um, so she she has a little bit of offense on Nia Jack. She tries to get a sleeper hold on her. But, you know, as always happens, she gets taken out, which is leading to something later in the show. Um, next, we see the club. Um, I really wish they'd just start calling them the hair club because uh, like AJ's not in the group anymore or they're separated from each other and it's just two ball guys. You can't call them the bullet <laughs> club, but just call them the hair club. <laughs> um, but whatever. Um, so uh, they did their promo uh, with the... The retirement. Uh, yeah, was this the old day segment? Old fart. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah so they bring out this this uh fake new day the new day in the future (laughs) yeah so guess what they call them the old day huh Huh? get it they're old they're not new anymore because you know the (laughs) other group is called the young day and they're the old day no i I couldn't tell like i was trying to figure out was this segment was it like racist or ageist (laughs) (laughs) Little column A, little column B. Yeah, the guys they brought out didn't look anything like the New Day. They were like they probably look... like a foot shorter each. Um, and there was who was the Big E of the group? They just had a guy with a pillow in his stomach. They called him Big E. Uh, he was riding a scooter, which makes it like harder to distinguish because it's like, is that a fat suit he's wearing? You couldn't tell until he got off the scooter. Like, oh, okay, that's supposed to be the big e one these random like black extras yeah and then they had the fake kofi and xavier uh xavier has like a little kid's toy trombone Um, (laughs) yeah so they do some bad comedy for a little while and painful yeah and then the new day comes out 
And I noticed during the segment, um, well, I think it was a little bit after the segment, but they don't call um, the championships the WWE Tag Team Championships anymore. I think the New Day still called it that, which is going to be some weirdness in the future. But they now yeah. call it the Raw Tag Team Championships just so they have synergy because all the other championships on SmackDown besides the world are going to be called SmackDown Women's Championship, SmackDown Tag Team Championship. So, so like the Raw Women's and the Raw yeah. Tag Team. Yeah, because I think uh, during this week they started calling them the Raw Tag Team Championships. I think they mentioned Charlotte as the Raw Women's Champion. So th- uh, that was interesting. I think that's going to make it harder to grind to because don't they do their little hip gyration when they say, WWE W-W-E. Tag Team Champion. So when you say W-W-E. Raw Tag Team Champion. I don't know. It's going gonna, it's gonna to give them an extra wine to do, I guess. Um, <laughs> so they come out and they uh, have their response to the old day. And then they beat them up. So that was pretty much it for this segment. I feel like that was a waste of um, the new day. It was a nice try. Week. Yeah, the the one nice thing. Nice comedy. Yeah, the one thing that I don't like that this segment took away from us is that we didn't get our introduction that we usually get from Big E, uh, which I have uh, artfully spoofed on our show. <laughs> but uh, I accurately. Yeah, they like that's a thing that I wait for each week of Raw. It's like only takes a few seconds, but it's like one of the highly highlights of Raw to me. So they didn't end up doing that. So I feel like that segment was a bust because of that. Um, one thing I do like that they did, and was probably the only good thing they did in this segment, is that they slowed down. They kind of like chopped and screwed the New Day's thing. Yeah, that, yeah I was going to say. Like, do, do, do. <laughs> so I thought that was a nice touch, but otherwise it was just <laughs> a stupid segment. Yeah, um, it's like I understand that they're trying to do like a whole – you know, the Callows and, and, um, and, uh, Anderson. Anderson, they're trying to do like the whole, like the retirement. Specialist. Yeah. They put and this wrestlers is, in retirement. Yeah. And this is pretty much like, I mean, they do it periodically, but this just make takes me back to like the <laughs> DX versus the, um, nation of domination when they had, uh, Triple H imitating The Rock and they had like everybody spoofing the different characters of the nation it was like that was worse in the sense that that was blackface when they did it but it was better in the sense that they actually had jokes and they had some kind of direction they were going with it this was just stupid and waste it was like it was worse the black the the blackface the racist blackface (laughs) yeah it's like it's like blackface comedy <laughs> they'll be offended or just bored i think i'd rather be offended than bored <laughs> i mean that's what that's why maybe i don't feel the same you'll, way as a lot of people do about that 9-11 mattress commercial like what well, was at least <laughs> at least it was kind of funny i felt something <laughs> yeah it was it was kind of funny although it was offensive but uh yeah. Moving on to something else that was offensive on this show. Uh, there was Darren a couple Young. more things. Darren Young versus Jinder Mahal. Because of why? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, the, the, there's nothing to say about this match. Um, what was even worse, at the end of this segment, Titus O'Neil comes out, um, who I have aptly nicknamed the unfortunate Titus O'Neil because uh, it continues. He comes out and tries to, uh, I guess, interfere with the match or whatever, or beat up Darren Young, um, which doesn't work out for him. Darren uh, is beating him up. He's fighting him off, and he's, like, slipping and sliding, falling all over the place on the ramp. He just looks like a complete fool. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. The, he's oily. Yeah, he's just not a good look for Titus again. So yeah, whatever that 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 was what it was. Um, backstage, we see uh, Nia Jax and Alicia Fox. Alicia confronts her and mad she, that she beat up her friend. Yeah, <laughs> so she beats up everyone on the show every week. Um, but like she like has this freak out on her and she like throws 
it looks like it was an accident but she throws this box like in her face and she like can't it looks like she got out of character for a second it's like oh i'm sorry and then she was like well, i don't care <laughs> it was like they could have done a a second take you on think that so if it wasn't live but i'm assuming it was live <laughs> i i assume that she she was like she for, that, like, for, a know, second, she she for a second she forgot this was yeah for a second she like forgot she was doing it live instead of tape but then she just got back into it She's like i don't care so she shoves her way so it looks like maybe nia Jax is going to have a feud with an actual uh woman superstar on the roster maybe somebody who can put up a fight possibly oh so you're saying that uh that she's actually gonna fight a legit wrestler like a braun it, Strowman did right after yes yeah, <laughs> except for the fact that Alicia Fox has been played off as a jobber pretty much for the past like three or four years at this point. <laughs> and she's always like what whenever she shows up, she's a heel or a baby face or a heel. And they never like have any consistent story with her. So this may be the first one. Although even with that, they're possibly going back to that that short-lived story of her being like crazy alicia fox i'm gonna pour soda on my head or and Ugh. so it looks like maybe they're gonna go back to that i hope they don't maybe she just kind of be a legitimate threat like one thing i i thought about alicia fox like nobody ever gave a shit about her and specifically commentary they like never really said anything they would say she's athletic or whatever but yeah, I liked yeah. when Booker T used to be on commentary, and this is the only thing I liked about Booker on commentary is that he was like, "She reminds me of myself," because <laughs> she does she does the scissors. She's kick. black and he's black. Because she does the <laughs> uh, the scissors kick, although hers looks horrible. But he used to always <laughs> like he, you could tell he cared about her getting over when he was talking about her on commentary. So like that was one thing that stuck in my head is like why can't she just be like a female booker t just just go around and like cut crazy nonsensical promos and, and like have you have seen decent matches uh booker t on the uh on the raw pregame the pre-show the, i don't watch pre -show those. YouTube. he's uh, he's just he's in mush mouth <laughs> and just kind of because I, I, I predict that he go weird because he's yeah booker he's t has always been like that that's why he's not a popular uh <laughs> commentator um but it's like when you look at the commentary now i mean they're they're better and they're they're more prepared to do their job now but still got people like jbl who are just as detrimental to commentary as Booker <laughs> T used to be. So detrimental to the English language. Yeah. Oh, I love it, Michael. Although he can't say Michael anymore because he's on SmackDown, but whatever. Um. So what was after this? We had, as you mentioned before, Braun Strowman versus Sin Cara. What? I know that what? guy. I've heard of Sin Cara. An um, actual wrestler. Yeah, and it's this they play this up they show a promo from Sin, Sin Cara who can speak oh my god I thought only Kalisto was the member of the Lucha Dragons who had a mouth under that mask um, <laughs> but he talks and he says that uh, he disrespected an another luchador by taking off Americo's mask although when I think I think when he took off Americo's mask didn't that guy like have red hair or something under there Guy's yeah, probably not a Mexican luchador, but no, he's Mexican and I mean, Irish. I mean, he's Americo, so I'm assuming he's probably just American. But anyway, uh, so he comes out to some like new uh, salsa type music, and I don't know. I I don't I don't anticipate anything involving Sin Cara, so I don't know why he got new music. I'm wondering like maybe he's gonna get a push, but we'll see. Um, anyway, uh, they announced that it's his birthday tonight, so maybe as a birthday present to him, they gave him a uh, more credible match with Braun Strowman. <laughs> Braun ends up winning by countout. He doesn't just destroy him like he does everyone else, so I guess maybe this is going to continue, and maybe they'll try to make us care. I I don't think they will be successful with that. Um, so my whole thing is, like, if, these rest, if Braun Strowman is, like, this unbeatable male wrestler and Nia Jax is be unbeatable. The champion. They should be fighting like the you know the reigning champions. That in was, perspective. 
I mean, that's just just one of the dumb things about wrestling, because like there's always those things where it's like, oh, this person is unbeatable, but why aren't they trying <laughs> why are to they become the these? champion? <laughs> like Mark Henry, he's been billed as the world's strongest man forever, and at one point he legitimately was the world's strongest man. He won a competition. But they never had him be a legit contender for the championship. And somehow <laughs> everybody in the company who's smaller than him manages to beat him. And he never gets title opportunities. <laughs> like for, for him, it made me the, the uh, most upset because, like, okay, this has got to be racism, right? Because, like, he's the world's strongest man. Like, there's no better <laughs> credit that you can have in the wrestling industry than being like, the legit like world's strongest man. <laughs> Um, He's like Artie, the world's strongest man from Pete and Pete. Yeah, except that <laughs> for our older listeners. <laughs> yeah, um, so like that always irritated me with him. And then they would have these periodic runs where, like, maybe people were injured or during the summertime where people took time off, where they would decide to push the big show, and he was just knocking everyone out. It was like, yeah, why don't you challenge for the championship? Because yes. it seems to be like. As an outsider, looking at how wrestling works, it makes me think that, okay, Monday Night Raw starts, and the people in charge of making matches have not made any matches. So sometimes the champion will come out and say a couple of things, and anybody who comes out and says, hey, champion, fuck you, that person gets a <laughs> title match. So why don't, like, Big it's Show. that easy. Why, Big Show, why don't you just come out and say, hey, champion, I can beat you up. And let me show you. And then at the end of the night, when you're in the main event, you just punch him in the face. Because <laughs> apparently that's all it takes. You could be champion. <laughs> like, Big Show's fist is as good as a Money in the Bank briefcase. But he never cashes it in. <laughs> like, that doesn't make sense. But whatever. Um, and another thing. <laughs> With Mark Henry, when they had the uh, the draft uh, during the brand split, he like gave this promo. They said they were going to send him to be like their representative for the Olympics. And he was like, you know, I think I have another run left in me. I think I'm going to uh, try to make a go of it this time. And then it was like he disappeared. <laughs> and I don't <laughs> understand like what the hell happened with that. Like there's no follow up. And I don't think there will be because they're not going to bring him back and try to have him make I mean, I guess they could try to have him come back and challenge Kevin Owens to lose because that's the only way they can go with that because Kevin Owens needs to be a legit champion and win for a while. Um, so it's just a lot of loose threads that, that always bug me when I think of him after the fact. But whatever, I got off track. So Braun Strowman beats in car. We'll see what, what's going to happen with that. We see Sasha Banks' bad news is coming up. Come back. She, to she, hear bad she news. actually, she actually got me. I was, I was actually. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was. I thought she was gonna. Yeah, retire or something. she was getting emotional. It was. It was uh, looking like maybe she was hinting at possibly retiring. She's like, I heard from the doctor, and then Dana comes out to interrupt her. And is like kind of taunting her, and then Sasha hits her with the backstabber, then the bank statement, and we see that her back seems to be fine. And she says, "My bad news wasn't about Miss my Piggy. back. My bad news was for you and Charlotte. Let her know that I'm coming for her championship." <laughs> That's my Sasha Banks impression. It's like accurate. I like her, but it's just her promo style is kind of. Uh, it's like if if she wasn't so popular and so charismatic like just in her wrestling her promos would sound heelish but everybody loves her so she can get away with it but um so that was her bad news uh it was bad news for charlotte so that was cool um one thing she said in her promo, like when it sounded like it she was, shit on the belt, the butterfly belt. Yeah, ugly butterfly belt. I like that. But then she said, like, 
back when Stephanie McMahon introduced the women's revolution. Like, stop giving Stephanie credit. I know. I, it's I like, don't know she did. Like, if anybody started the women's revolution, well, number one, it was Sarah Del Rey in backstage at NXT, who was training the women to be actual wrestlers. And it was uh, Triple H and Dusty yes. Rhodes for <laughs> all the work that they did with them in NXT. And it's like, they just decided that on main roster WWE TV that Stephanie is going to be the face of the women's revolution. Well, because she's the only woman, woman in, <laughs> in charge there. So I guess they got to put her as the figurehead for the women's division. Even though I like, give triple, I give triple H credit for like making it better wrestling, more, yeah. more legitimate wrestling. Yeah. Cause that's the thing. Like other than like coming out and saying, Hey, here's a bunch of new women. Stephanie didn't do anything uh, to promote these women, she just like introduced them and just like soaking in all the credit. It's like, where do these people come from? It came from NXT. You had nothing to do with them in NXT. Yeah, so they, got, they just, got a whole whole documentary on the WWE Network. What's it called? With w, Diva uh, uh, Evolution, Woman's to... Evolution, yeah. or something like that. <laughs> so yeah, and another thing that irritated me during this segment is that. I, I said earlier that I didn't want to offend people from Kansas City, but there's some really shitty people in Kansas City. Oh, sure there is. Can, no, go for it. The, the people there would agree. Yeah, you could hear, like, like it was the guy, sounded like he was on camera side, like, yelling during Tasha's promo, like, you're not China. Like, what the fuck what does, the that, fuck does mean? that mean? What the fuck does that mean? Like, because then she was talking about, like, when I was a kid, I would come and see uh, – she doesn't WrestleMania. Have a yeah. Flip. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Apparently, allegedly. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, I would come and watch WrestleMania. And then he would say, To watch China? It's like, what? Hey, what the hell? Like, 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 people have problems when fans get kicked out for like having signs that promote other things or stuff like that. But like, people like this need to get kicked out. And like, it sounded like he didn't. And this is just irritating when I hear stuff like that. It's like it was distracting from what was a pretty decent segment, but whatever. Um, so I thought this was funny too that she basically pulled a Mark Henry in this yeah, uh, yeah. fake retirement speech, except for the Mark Henry turned evil and turned heel when he did it. But she, <laughs> like, everybody loved that she did it because, like, yeah, don't quit. Fuck that. Um, and I thought this was what was happening with the Dudley boys, but apparently that is not happening because they're actually taking other bookings and they're they're going to be wrestling in ICW uh, sometime soon, except for the fact that they were supposed to retire. And I thought when mm -hmm. you retired, you, you wink, stop wrestling wink. anywhere, but they just retire from WWE, I guess. But whatever. <laughs> um. All right. So what was next? Um, the main match main yeah. event owens versus owens versus Sami Zayn, which they said they were doing for the last time um but here it is again and it it was <laughs> something that was a big deal when they were doing it on pay-per-view but then they just threw it away on tv which they could have built up to this because they had a whole story like these people were best friends and they've been fighting and they've uh they're canadians yeah, right they're canadians they grew up they came up in the business together and they have they have a joint t-shirt this is like fight forever so it's like they could have built this up to a pay-per-view match but they just decided to give it away on tv <laughs> without any bill but whatever um you would have thought so, that, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe, but 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 Owens and Rollins, that's that's the, uh, that's um, that's what people want to see. Yeah, oh, okay, totally. Um, yeah, Owens Rollins is the next match, but they could have built up to Sami Zayn. Anyway, um, Owens defeats Sami Zayn. Yeah, and we get uh, we a get an appearance from Roman Reigns, who had just shown up to work. <laughs> three hours late exactly. <laughs> um so he comes out to challenge because he didn't get the memo that you come out and challenge the champion in the opening segment they had so to that fit him you into can the get show right yeah. yeah um so this was whatever and then it is announced that 
uh, what next week he's getting a chance uh, to fight for a title shot. So clash of champions, yeah. Yeah. So we'll f- we were almost uh, we were almost uh, Roman Reigns free. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, uh, Rusev <laughs> is going on his like three week honeymoon, uh, so he's not available so roman needs something to do so why not give him a championship match exactly. uh i guess um so smackdown <laughs> Smack. i want to smack down yeah um they start out with a six woman segment um, yeah well becky lynch comes out yeah on the, becky on the lynch comes mic. out yeah and they they're kind of just interviewing them about how they feel about this upcoming six pack challenge like, you know she's the, she's saying she's the best women's wrestler she's gonna get that finally get that belt she was the first woman drafted yeah by smackdown and it was interesting i think they mentioned this on commentary during the show but it's like everybody who she debuted with has won the uh woman's championship and she's the last one who hasn't won it uh so if she doesn't win it she's gonna be seen as pretty big loser so we'll, loser. We'll, we'll find out how that works so then each person it makes comes sense out that, yeah it makes sense that she would win it because i mean like who else are you going to give it to yeah she's the <laughs> like the top woman on the show so you, yes you would want her to be the focal point and the champion so um like each person comes out and cuts their little promo one by one yeah, yeah. it was funny like how they cut it because you would think this was like old style smackdown because it's like i didn't they didn't show anybody else come out so it's like carmella just appears from thin air it's like i know she's skinny but did she just like walk from behind the ring post and appear because it's like she was just all of a sudden in the ring um and she was terrible as usual um <laughs> I'm the moon walking, trash talking. Right. Queen of Staten Island. Yeah, that's quite a title. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that segment was whatever. Um, next, what was it? Uh, I think Dolph Ziggler was com- he was out on commentary. Uh, and one thing I thought during the Miz and Apollo Cruz. Yeah. Fight. Yeah, I thought it was. He rude. was dressed like a substitute teacher. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and he was outing the commentators for having notes, <laughs> which I thought was pretty douchey. Um, yeah, they're prepared. They're prepared. They're professionals, Dolph. Yeah. So uh, he was talking about trolls on the internet, but it was weird that he was trolling the commentators while they were just trying to do their job. Um, so. The how does the Miz Apollo Cruz match end? Um, is it just uh, when he, it, uh, like, Dolph interferes or whatever? Yeah, Dolph comes out yeah. and he Ziggler throws Apollo into Dolph and they both fall down. Yeah, uh, the Miz wins, but he runs out of the ring. Yeah, and he forgets Dolph, his championship. I guess. Yeah, and then that's when uh, Ilana goes in there to get it. Yeah, he sends he sends his wife since Maurice to pick up his championship for him and they say he's a coward send his wife in there to do what he should have done himself but you know some some uh misogynist out there would say that's exactly what you do tell your wife to clean up after you um so <laughs> um the usos have a little promo and they uh they're hinting at their possible turn that happens later but they say uh they basically say they're the vets and the line for who's going to be uh smackdown tag team champions starts behind us so that is whatever um bray (laughs) wyatt comes out and he does one of his bray wyatt promos which is he does Wyatt things yeah it's the thing that he always does you can pretty much uh it's pretty much mad libs at this point um but uh he talks about randy orton and how he thought he was the apex predator but he's not anymore and uh you know he's the new face of fear and You'll learn to fear me, Randy, and yada, yada, yada. I think that Bray Wyatt promos are 
stale and he really needs to either stop doing them or figure out some kind of way to change him up. Uh, but it, it's weird that they always involve like it, it's the same thing every I time. I always zone out once he starts yeah. talking. And... It's always the same thing, but they always involve like calling someone a liar. <laughs> it's like this world, man, is full of lies. <laughs> Your parents lie to you. The government lies to you. Randy Orton, you say you're the apex predator, but you're a liar. So that's just whatever. Um, Orton uh, retorts uh, later in the show, but his was just as nonsensical. But I wanted to jump to that because uh, what the said, fuck? Yeah, <laughs> when I, I think I was like. Well, I was in like the, the the bathroom. I think I was shaving or something. So, all of a sudden, I just, like, I just go, hear. I'll go over <laughs> this one. Okay, so he says Bray Wyatt likes to tell stories. So let me tell a little story. But he's high. He's, of weed. <laughs> so he says, "Is a man in the forest hunting, and he sees a rabbit, and he, like the man, I guess the man is starving to death and he's hungry. He sees a rabbit, and he looks to the side. He also sees a snake." And the snake and the man both want that same rabbit, but the snake decides to wait. The man takes his shot, he gets the rabbit, and then the snake attacks because the snake knew that they both wanted the rabbit, but if the snake lies in wait, that he could have them both. So that was the story. (laughs) (laughs) There's something you can learn from that. Yeah, I thought it was interesting in the sense that yes it relates to his viper character and it plays into that but randy orton should not be telling stories no no it's no, just no. it's not a aspect of his character that i felt needed to be added i like <laughs> i like kind of off the cuff randy orton who kind of seems like he's just speaking from the heart when he does speak and he doesn't need to speak all the time sometimes he could just be that badass that comes out of nowhere in RKO's somebody and just like shakes his head around and disappears. He should talk less. <laughs> yeah. And that seems to be like jumping back to Raw a little bit. That seems to be slightly the angle that they're trying to take with Roman Reigns. It seemed incidental when they had their like promo thing back and forth and Reigns said the least two weeks ago. And this week where he didn't say anything, it just came out and kind of just had a stare down it seems to be the way they're going with him as being like kind of the silent uh badass which he should have been the entire time but they're doing it wrong and this also doesn't work with uh orton in the opposite direction of having (laughs) him speak more we don't need that so um so uh i skipped over something in jumping to randy but there was uh nikki bella and Becky Lynch and Naomi versus Alexa Bliss and Natalia, Natalia and Carmella. And your favorite Carmella. Yeah. Carmella the Moonwalk. Yeah. And one thing I I noticed this before, but that intro song for Carmella is just a rip off of that Iggy Azalea song. Fancy. <laughs> it's like <laughs> I already hate that song, and this is like a bootleg version of a crappy song. <laughs> so like. That that only adds to my hatred of this character. Um, so this was the point where the commentary was talking about she will be the last to win gold from the women's revolution. Although it's like they can call them the women's revolution because they were the first like new women to debut from NXT. But you brought in like six or seven women since then. So yeah, you should kind of include everybody else. Like Half now, a dozen. yeah, like so now like Carmelo would be the last one to win gold from the women's revolution or something. Like there's a lot of more people to consider now, but whatever. Um, so Carmelo uh, forces Nikki to tap out. Yeah, the. So she hits her code of silence, the like leg choke. It looks like a decent move, but she needs to figure out a kind better way to, to yeah exactly to, to get to it, to apply get it, into, it. She needs yeah. to 
Because, like, the best submissions are ones that you can, like, snatch somebody from Quickly. a standing position into. Like, one, two, three, go. Yeah, it's like somebody has to knock her down, and then she has to, like, <laughs> shift into place. and you gotta lean. contort. And yeah, like, and lean on one arm. Five and seconds. And then pull your foot behind you. It's like, okay, that's, that's not going to be something that's going to uh, be consistent winner for you. Um, but uh, one thing I thought... I like Alexa Bliss's move that she did right before the end, except she messed it up this time. But I like when I've seen it in the past. She does a flip and then she, she uh, lands on her knees and then flips back onto you. Um, but are you, are you talking about the one where she like she like flipped and then she like landed on the uh, yeah on the, on the side on Nikki's side or whatever. Yeah, I, I don't think, know if she I think did she purpose. missed this time, but she's supposed <laughs> to land like on your stomach, knee first. And I watched, I watched, I was like, okay, that move looks like it could be good. But I looked it up on YouTube and it looks better when she hits it properly. But like that could have been a finisher if she hit it right. But hopefully Alexa Bliss gets better because I know a lot of people are like obsessed with her just because how she looks. I guess a lot of people like short girls and they like to see her butt hanging out of her shorts. So hopefully she can <laughs> like back up that obsession that some people have with her with some actual wrestling skills so we'll see that would be nice yeah um next is the usos versus american alpha and uh basically they just attack them right off the bat um i i consider this to be the official start of their heel turn but um so they attack them from behind and then they go on to lose 30 seconds later so that was a surprise flash finish for them and then what most people considered the official start of the hill yes. was after that when they they went to shake hands with them again which is like i don't know why american alpha seems like <laughs> two dummies like they just pulled this trick on you 30 seconds ago and so why would you shake their hands again but i like the just like the logistics of the move like where I can't remember which Uso is which, but the one Uso is shaking uh, Jason Jordan's hand, but at the same time, super kicks Chad Gable. <laughs> so he's shaking his hand and then kicks his partner in the face and then they attack him. So I like that they they push uh, Jordan out of the ring and they, like, like, one brother holds him, he jumps up and does a stomp on his knee and then they... It, holds them into a half oh, they crab could be, they could be injured for yeah the, yeah so that was the first backlash. part and then he gives him in a half crab and he does a splash on the other leg that's exposed so i thought that was a decent uh angle to kind of get them out of backlash because it sounds like i think it was announced after that that they are uh, not in the tournament anymore so it's going to be like a last chance um tournament entry match on the backlash pay-per-view yeah the, the Wusos, you know they got tired of sort of like you know being the nice guys and playing by the by the rules and they never got a push they feel so now now they have to do this to finally get some attention yeah so i think this has potential to be more interesting too. for them um because the american alpha they're like the shiny new toys and everybody likes them and yeah. They're already like, they're getting more opportunities than the Usos ever did. Yeah, so I think that's interesting to have the veteran team be uh, the heels, and they're probably going to be the ones to win the tournament. I'm assuming. I mean, they're not in it officially, but they're going to get a last chance opportunity to get in the tournament. So I'm assuming they're going to win that and go on to face, I guess, Slater and Rhino um, in the final match. And if you really want to get them over as heels, they should cheat to beat Slater and Rhino to make sure that Slater doesn't have a contract. So that will get extra heat on them as heels. Um, although that would like put them in a the corners. Like, how does Slater get a contract after that? What do they do after that point? Yeah. But it's like to get a contract, he has to win and then be tag team champion. I don't really want to see Slater and Rhino's tag team champions because I feel like they, <laughs> that's just I like a comedy gimmick and they should have some legit first time tag champs. So I feel like, like, like ha having the veteran team team that's been mushed together and, and yeah. immediately they're winning the championship. Yeah, so I feel like having a veteran team who has been 
teaming together their entire lives as being the top heel tag team gives something to look forward to and makes like the good guys, American Alpha, it gives them something to fight for when they come back from injury or whatever. So that's probably going to be the way they go with that, with the Usos winning at Backlash. That's my prediction. Um, we saw uh, Slater's uh, family, his kids, uh, when after he Slay and Brian Slay's defeated kids. the Hype Hy- Hy- Brothers. <laughs> yeah, Slay Slay's kids. His, his um, redhead, redheaded kid. Yeah, they, oh. sh- they showed them all out looking like, uh, uh, you know, the character from The Simpsons, uh, Cletus the Slack Cletus Jaw the Yokel. Cletus the Yokel. <laughs> yeah. And his, his kids. One, yeah. one of his kids is actually named Incest. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even remember that. Uh <laughs> Hey, Larleen, get the kids. So that's pretty much what this gimmick is. They said there was uh, more footage from them if you checked out uh, their Facebook page. I haven't looked at that, but yeah. I'll check that out later. Yeah. Um, Heath doesn't wear condoms. Totally not. Condoms are lame. Um, anyway, uh, I think we missed this Fandango segment. Yeah, what was that? It is just like the uh, guy last week who was the milkman who came with his license to wrestle. Uh, this was basically <laughs> just an excuse for Kane to come out and choke slam somebody, which was like, oh, yay, that's going to be a thing every week now. Which is like, why? Why Kane? Why now? Why? Why period? Like, cha- <laughs> uh, Kane is unnecessary. He needs to just go find a small town and run for uh, elected office there, just like Rhino. Um, but he comes out of choke slams him after Fandango dances with some tattooed chick named Betty. Um, it's funny. He asked her about her tattoos. Like, what's up with the tattoos? And she's like, I like nature. <laughs> I, was <just> like, what? <laughs> I couldn't tell what the tattoo was. It has like reason. a sleeve on her arm. It's like I guess it's nature related. It was like whatever. She does like this crazy dance, kind of like uh, Hoda Kotb esque dance. Um, and he's says her hips are liars. And uh, here's how you dance and. And uh, he challenges Kane to a dance off. He gets choke slammed and you know, whatever. And then I guess this is a a sports thing. They chanted "Go Big Red." I guess that's a what is that a Kansas City thing? Uh, but what uh, the Chiefs? Maybe I don't know. I guess go, they chanted <laughs> "Go Big Red" at Kane um, backstage. Uh, AJ Styles is. Uh, I think he did something else earlier in the night, but he's kind of like paranoid because he's embarrassed about getting his his nuts injured last week. So he <laughs> thinks everybody's like pointing at him and laughing. He says, and like, he yells at like was like the cameraman or whoever that was. Or? Where was the guy backstage with his phone? He's like, "Are you taking a picture of me?" Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he grabs his phone and throws it against the wall. <laughs> he's like, "Go clean that up." Um, so yeah, that was funny. It's it, it was an interesting story that they're telling because he's been so like jokey and cocky like since he beat John Cena. He's so, the man who runs the place. He gets yeah, all so the he, face that runs the place. Yeah, so he he had his comeuppance at the hands of Dean Ambrose. So he goes from being like super cocky to being like extra paranoid and stuff. So I like that he's like having a character arc on this show like from week to week. Um, uh, next is the Hype Bros versus Slater and Rhino. Obviously, the Hype Bros, uh, they managed to mess up and lose the match, right? I guess they pretty much ended up being the main event of the night. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Ryder gets crotched and then gets gored by Rhino for the win. Um, uh, during the match, they showed Slater's kids out there in they, As we mentioned. they just look uh, ridiculous in their overalls and their, their red heads. Um, oh, I forgot that before this, they had some Kurt Hawkins facts. More. Oh, that's so stupid. You mean the, the Chuck Norris facts that you, that yeah. you mentioned before? It, 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 now it's like a, a combination of uh, lame Chuck Norris facts 
mixed with lame Yakov Shmirnov jokes. Because <laughs> they're like, uh, Kurt Hawkins tells his GPS where to go. And ghosts are afraid of Kurt Hawkins. And forest fires are afraid of Kurt Hawkins. It's like, what? Um, because it's like, it just makes me think of that. Like, in communist Russia, you tell GPS where to go. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. It's like, yeah. please stop these <laughs> so i guess he's supposed to be deb- yourself i guess he's supposed to be debuting next week and the only way i can see this going is he shows up and just gets immediately destroyed by whoever I hope comes so. out and what would be interesting is like they need to like they've done the jobber match thing for decades like you have the guy you're trying to get over as a superstar come out and beat this person who shows up once and you never see them again but what they need to do is actually have Kurt Hawkins come out and these jobbers, like people that are never never seen again, who are just like local talent, they beat him and just disappear <laughs> like each time. <laughs> like so it's not like they're beating him because they're gonna get a push. They just beat him because he sucks. That would be funny. And they need to do something like that because it'd be like a way to spotlight these independent wrestlers who just have this one match contract. Just be a different twist on the whole jobber gimmick. But whatever. Um, so if after, you're listening, Shane. Yeah, yeah. Or Stephanie. Shane, Daniel, take notes. Get uh, You go get Dana Brooks. Uh, clipboard and you take notes on what we just said um so they replay the attack on chad gable and they 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 really hype this up it's like the usos have been stand-up guys for years and i just can't believe they have stooped so low i like that they really put the focus on that um they say chad gable's status is questionable and then we find out it sounds like they've been taken out of the match um, the Usos talk backstage and they say, for six years we've been busting ass trying to get respect and guess what? We're done with that. And then he drops the mic uh, in front of Renee Young. Um, they show Ambrose getting his hair sprayed backstage. I guess he's getting ready for the official main event of the yeah. show. Hits and, on women. Yeah. yeah. So uh, this final Thing for the show is Ambrose and AJ Styles going face to face. That is the main event for your go home SmackDown show for their first pay per view of this brand split. Is just a promo battle. Yeah. Uh, that cultivates with Styles kicking Ambrose in the nuts. Yeah. So <laughs> there you go. That isn't that isn't that what we said we wanted every show to end like that. Yeah, nut shots. Oh, they actually listened to us. <laughs> Yeah. So it's Nutshots Live. That's the subtitle for SmackDown. Um, so, yeah, that's great. So um, I, I just yeah, like, the, addition, a, I, I like the additional touch of uh, the announcer saying he would now like to be referred to as the face that runs the place. <laughs> and it's funny that he like this like armband has migrated. He first he had it on his head and it was like kind of crooked. And then he put it straight on as a headband last week. And now he actually put it on his arm finally, <laughs> which yeah. is the way it was meant to be worn. But um, it, it just shows just how smaller he is compared to John Cena. Yeah. Cena's. Like uh, John Cena armband is as big as an AJ Styles headband. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So that was the match for, uh, I mean, that was the preview for Backlash uh, coming up. Uh, which is actually happening tonight, right? Yeah, yeah, we record yeah. this on Facebook Seven Live. Hours. Yeah, so if you're watching this on Facebook Live, get ready for backlash. Uh, backlash. Yeah, so get ready for. I that. think Ambrose defeats uh, AJ Styles. Yeah, I I don't see that going any other way. I wouldn't mind seeing AJ win, but it just seems to be that's the way they're going, especially based on the law of reverse momentum as uh, mentioned by Rolling Stone magazine recently like if you see somebody standing tall at the end of a show especially a go home show then that person is going to lose <laughs> at the pay-per-view and that tends to be the case um 
even with that being kind of a weak ending, I would say SmackDown is, I don't know, because I always try to think between the two shows of the week, which one was better and which one do you say you preferred for this uh, week? It was Raw easily. Okay. Yeah, because Raw had more elements that I was interested in overall. Um, yeah, you had the Sasha thing. Yeah. Uh, I just think that overall, like Kevin Owens. And Kevin Owens' had, promo was You had an really actual good. main event. Yeah. Yeah, he had a real match as the main event. The Nia Jax thing, even though it's, it's business as usual, I'm more interested in seeing, like, if Alicia Fox actually gets yeah a decent that, match out of her, that's starting to like move along a little bit. Yeah. Um. Let me see what else was a highlight for me. Uh, the New Day thing was just <laughs> cringeworthy, bad, pointless, but it, and it was yeah, it it was there. Um. I think the Rollins and Jericho match was decent. So that was probably one of the better matches for the week. Um, but yeah, I would say. Yeah. Raw the pedigree was, touch was nice. Yeah. And finding out that there is a, uh, a new WWE film going, coming straight to DVD. That was another highlight for me. Absolutely. Starring WWE CJ films. Perry, AKA Lana. <laughs> yeah. Um, the interrogator. Yeah. So, but it's funny that when I was, uh, when I go to WWE.com to uh, pull up the raw recap, it just says, keep on sucking at the top of the page. Keep on sucking. <laughs> yes. It just, that's their little ad for uh, Jolly Rancher. That's, I guess that's their slogan <laughs> oh, nowadays. Oh, yeah, yeah. Keep yeah. on sucking. It's just like, that's pretty suggestive for a candy that's, that's uh, being marketed for. to kids generally. But yeah. So don't you, stop sucking. Yeah, there you go. Never stop. That's good advice. Don't, don't stop sucking because there's so much great juicy flavor on, <laughs> on the horizon. Just keep sucking. You'll get. You'll get. There. Even even after, just don't stop. Yeah. So yeah, that's totally a great uh, ad campaign. Um. So I'm trying to pull up the the rundown for backlash. Uh, I hope, hope uh, Becky Lynch wins. Yeah. I don't think she will though, just, just simply because of like what happened, you know, with her coming out there and saying that oh, I, like I've, I've I haven't won. This is you know I'm. I deserve to win and all that stuff. It's like they're kind of they're kind of propping it up to. Yeah, because that's the thing is that there is always more interest in seeing the chase for the championship than to see the underdog just win it. But yeah, as like from a business perspective, I feel like you want the most popular diva on your show to be champion. But there's still, I mean, there's still time to get to that point, I guess. But we also this is their first brand exclusive pay-per-view so you want something interesting to happen it's like so do you, do you see like carmella winning no i feel like on the opposite end i think what they could do is go predictable with the women's championship match and have becky win and maybe some underhanded way they could do something on the next smackdown where she gets uh the title kind of gets stolen in a, in a cheating uh, way in the herd like first defense but I feel like they have to start off their Smackdown brand pay-per-views with a like surprising like twist like saying like anything can happen on a Smackdown pay-per-view that's why you should tune in so they're probably going to go the other way with the Dean Ambrose AJ match I feel like that would be their reason for actually giving AJ the title so I think that's the way they're going to go with the AJ Styles match. So the other matches that are on the pay-per-view is we know that there's Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt. There's the Intercontinental Championship match with The Miz versus Dolph Ziggler. The final showdown, hopefully, of Colonel Sanders and the Chicken. <laughs> it's not going to be the final showdown. But uh, also we have the Usos and the Hype Bros in their kind of last chance qualifier match in the tag team tournament. Whoever wins that goes up against Slater and Rhino um, for the finals of the 
WWE SmackDown Tag Team Championship Tournament. So that's it for the first ever SmackDown brand pay-per-view backlash. So that's the preview for backlash. I think that the show is going to be interesting. It seems like it's going to be a pretty short show. That's not very many matches on the card. So I think this will be um, a pretty brief show. And I think that there's some interest going into it with the main event. I feel like there could be a surprise in that main event. So I look forward to that. And that's really it for the wrestling of this week of September 5th. 2016 so with that i will wrap up on behalf of my co-host tony hoffman this is zach hughes with this week's episode of the frustrated wrestling fan you can follow the show at frustrated grad on twitter you can follow me at zach from chicago on twitter and i believe tony is on twitter at Anthony Hoffman. So check out all that stuff. So thanks for watching on Facebook and YouTube, wherever you're watching this. And thanks for listening. You have been watching, listening, experiencing the frustrated wrestling fan number five. Thanks for being here. That's all you get for today.